chronically trying to spike your dopamine in order to enhance your motivation, focus, and drive will absolutely undermine your motivation, focus, and drive in the long run. Ingestion of caffeine is somewhat of an exception among the other examples of things I've mentioned to avoid before what would otherwise be dopamine increasing activities because again, caffeine can increase the density and the efficacy of these dopamine receptors. Turns out that the source of caffeine could also matter. While coffee or tea or other forms of caffeine will have this effect of increasing dopamine receptors, yerba mate, something I've talked about before on this podcast, has some interesting properties. First of all, it contains caffeine. It's also high in antioxidants. It also contains something called GLP-1, which is favorable for management of blood sugar levels. Yerba mate, it turns out, has also been shown to be neuroprotective specifically for dopaminergic neurons. Now, I should mention this is just a couple of studies, so we don't want to conclude too much from these studies. More needs to be done. But they showed that in a model of damage to dopamine neurons, ingestion of yerba mate and some of the compounds within yerba mate can actually serve to preserve the survival of dopamine neurons in both the movement-related pathway and the motivation pathway. So perhaps you need that incentive in order to ingest yerba mate tea. Perhaps uh, you don't need any incentive. In my case, I don't need any incentive. I already enjoy yerba mate as my principal source of caffeine, although I do drink coffee as well. 